the way that God can change your life in a real and meaningful way. Many people wonder why life is boring and difficult. Full of trials and tribulations, many might say. What have you learned to be able to look beyond that? To look to what you need to learn. To look to what you should learn. It may be something additional to the basic knowledge that you've already got. You've learned it, but you're, you're growing beyond that simplistic, the, the child level. You've grown into something that you can sink your teeth into. The Bible describes that as the difference between the milk of the Word and the meat of the Word. There are those people who understand very little of God's Word because they've been taught very little. There are those who understand very little of God's Word because they refuse to understand more. They're content with who they are and what they are and almost willing to take the difficulties of life just because that's life. But it doesn't have to be life. As you learn and you grow, as you express the desire to learn more, you're taught new things through God's Word that continue to improve the quality of your life, change the level of joy and peace that you have in your life. One thing you may stop and look at is, if I am not content with my life the way it is, what is my desire to learn? What do I want to learn that can make it different? Or would I rather just sit and complain about all the things that aren't right, about all the things that don't work, you can grow through that, and you can grow beyond that. Are you willing to grow beyond it? Are you willing to say, I want to learn again. I want to learn more. I want to be that sponge that just soaks it up. You see, it's same, it may seem meaningless to some. Knowledge, that is. I'm good, I've learned enough, I'm going to get through the rest of my life on what I know, and I'm content with that. This week I was in a restaurant, and there was a lady in there behind the counter, and she was serving another customer, and they began a conversation. So the customer looks at her and says, I'm going to have to go get a haircut, that's where I'm on my way to, but somehow people always decide that the people in certain situations like that are, are worthy of the whole story. They're not just going to leave it as I'm headed from here to go get a haircut. They're going to explain the reason why. Well, why would most people go get a haircut? They think that their hair is too long, most likely, or they want it changed or they want it different. So he proceeds to begin to tell to the point where he says, you know, the hair grows longer on this side than it does on this side. And the barber always has to account for that. And I'm thinking, well, do they cut it extra short on this side so it'll all grow out and kind of end up the same? Or how does that work? And when you're standing there waiting on your food, all you can do is listen. So the, the waitress kind of looked at him and smiled and said, well, I've got an interesting fact for you. I mean, since we're talking about length of hair and things like that, and I'm like, I can't wait. She said, did you know that the hair is longer on one side of a horse than the other? And he looked at her and he said, could you repeat that? Yeah, did you know that the hair on a horse is longer on one side than on the other? He said, no, I, I can't say as I've ever really thought about that. I get this picture of him walking out the next time he sees a horse with a ruler and, and measuring both sides. And then she looked at him and she could hardly contain herself. She messed up the punchline. She kind of got herself back together and she said, it's always longer on the outside. And he just stood there and he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. And you know, we might look at that and we think, that was about useless information. I, I don't know that I'm really going to use that, but then evidently I did because it worked great for a, a sermon illustration. But in reality, we sit there and we go through situations every day where we hear information that may or may not seem to be beneficial at that given time. So what would you consider as vital information from what you just heard? 
Now stop and think about that for a second. Because your immediate answer might be, well, I didn't really need that. I didn't really need to know that. I would have been just fine without it. But have you thought about the point of the matter? You see, when we learn, the things that we need to learn are governed by the point of the matter. You see, in your mind, you get to determine what the point of the matter was in that conversation. Or did you think there is no point to that? It was just an interaction between two people that ended in a less than hilarious outcome. So then what was the point of you hearing it? The point is that oftentimes we focus on the wrong point of the matter. You see, we were focused on multiple things. And that's the way our life goes. We drift from thing to thing. Not really seeing the point in what we saw. For those of you who are thoroughly lost right now, understand this. Every situation that we're placed in, we can learn something from. You see, the point wasn't for us to learn that the horse's hair was longer on the outside than on the inside. But you might have thought that was it. Because all the while you're looking, you're listening, where is this going? Is it going to be about the guy and his haircut? Is it about the horse? Is it about something else? You see, it was. It was about something else. It was about the fact that a man needed somebody to talk to. And it really didn't matter what. That woman was willing to step in and try to get him to smile. To try to add a little joy to his day. For him to have the opportunity to just feel like there was somebody that would listen. But as we listen to the exchange, we get caught up in a fact that really isn't the point. You see, we may not learn anything really important about the length of hair and which side of the horse it's on. But from the interaction, we can learn a lot. We can determine what we would have done. We can determine would we have been willing to listen would we have been rude to the lady and say, that was ridiculous, I can't believe you thought that was funny? You see, there's many different personalities and any one of them could have reacted in those ways. But you see, to many people, the point of the matter is missed. And that's why they fail to grow. That's why they don't desire to learn. They're not looking for the point that they can learn from. They're just looking to process whether it's important to them in some aspect or not. But just like in the exchange that you just heard, you had no idea what you may or may not learn at the beginning of the conversation. Everyone shared something in common. You weren't there. You didn't know. I could have said, and then the restaurant burned down in the middle of the conversation. I could have said he decided that he didn't like the answer and he walked out frustrated and angry. I could have said anything. And you wouldn't have known any different. So the point of the matter is that there are a number of points to the matter. And oftentimes in our life, we are looking for one single point to change our opinion, to change our feelings, to change our emotions. And then we take the information that we've gathered and we process it, just as you just did. Is this relevant? How does this do anything for me? How does this, how does this make me learn anything? You see, some things, when we focus on the actual point of the matter, we have to wait a bit to see how it develops, to see where it's going and what we should learn. And we may be a bit confused along the way. Isn't that just like life? 
God will send us through things we don't understand. We don't know where they're going. We don't know what they're for. We don't even know how we're about to respond. And sometimes we respond too early. The man could have looked at the lady and said, you know what, I've heard this before. He could have said, you couldn't even get the punchline right, so, you know, let's just talk about the food. But instead, both parties gained something. He gained a caring conversation. She gained a listening ear. She was doing her best to do her best. And how many times do we miss the main point of any aspect or situation that we face in our life? We sit at the end of life and we look back. And we may find ourselves wishing in certain aspects, in certain areas, certain time periods that we had learned more. But at the moment, what we needed to learn was missed because we didn't see the point of the matter. Turn, if you will, and look again at Proverbs 9 and verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Are you increasing in learning? But notice how this verse is split. Notice that there isn't a little and between give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser, and he will increase in learning. Instead, it talks about wisdom, and it talks about knowledge. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Break. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Now, wise and just are both admirable qualities, godly qualities. But there's a difference between wisdom and learning. An educated man can be educated, but he may not be wise. A wise man may not excel in his level of learning, but he can excel in wisdom. Some of the wisest men that I know aren't educated men. And you might say, well, if it's not about education, then well, why do we have to learn? Because they're both included in that verse. Understanding and learning and teaching are all aspects that we need. Are you willing to be taught? Are you willing to get to the point where you say, I never noticed that. I didn't know that. But now that I know it, I appreciate it. If each day of our lives we look for the point of the matter, then we begin to understand that there's something that I need to be looking for. You see, the point of the matter is often more important because there are multiple points to the matter. We tend to look at one single thing or try to discern, and sometimes we stop too early because we think we heard what the point was. So we fail to listen properly, which means we don't learn properly. You ever met somebody that would stop you halfway through? They, they didn't listen to everything. And because they didn't listen to everything, everything wasn't understood properly. And because it wasn't understood properly, guess what happens? Miscommunication. Sometimes it's necessary for us to listen fully in order to understand more. When we began to look at the need to learn, we have to understand that all of these opportunities exist. Some are expected. Some are unexpected. I don't believe that the conversation that I heard this weekend was planned. Are you ready to learn from the things that come into your life that are unexpected? Can you respond in the proper way to the things that are unexpected? We Often, most of us like schedules. We like to have the control over knowing what's coming and what we're doing and how our time works. We like to control the situations that we find ourselves in. You know what? One thing we have to learn is we can't control everything. 
You can plan on a long life, but you may not lead a long life. That makes today even more important because you can't plan on what you don't know is or isn't coming. Many people during this past period of the year or so have lost people unexpectedly. They had planned on years yet to come. They had planned on when they were going to do this and what they were going to do, and guess what? Life changed. But God didn't. That was God's plan. And oftentimes we fail to learn that God's plan is always in effect. And so because people don't want to learn that fact, that aspect, that point of the matter, they live their life differently. What are you living your life for? Have you learned the important factors of life? Have you learned to look each day for what God would have you to do? Have you looked at the information that you process each day? We tend to categorize and to to file away. This is important. This is not important. This has to be done now. This can wait till later. We process, but we never look to the point of the matter that we're supposed to be looking for. How many times have you gone looking for something that someone asked you to find? You brought them what you thought it was. And they continued to say, that's not what I'm looking for. Don't you know? I'm looking for this. It had this. It had this on the folder. It had this writing on it. It had a little note on it that said this. We continued to look without paying attention to the importance of what we're looking for. But again, the question is, are you looking? Are you looking to learn Or are you simply looking to continue on? We never get too old to learn. You can't look at God and say, I'm cutting it off right here. I'm not interested anymore. And oftentimes we want to learn the easy way, don't we? Why do you think they created cliff notes? Somebody didn't want to read the whole book. They didn't want to study it. They didn't really care. Just get me what I need to get through what I got to get through. But what if you still weren't happy with the cliff notes? You can't get by without some information. You can't get the grade that you needed on the paper that you were going to have to write. That was until they created video. And then everybody said, I'll just go watch the movie. But each step downward you take, the more you simplify the matter that you should be learning. And in reality, sometimes the thing that we're supposed to learn, it does just happen. You have to sit through class to get to the point where you take a quiz and then you take a test. And then the next year you get to move on to something different or something that you've built upon what you've learned. But you can't just walk up and say, I want to go from here to the test and just be done with it for the year. In some cases. But that's not what life is. You can't look at God and say, I'm going to bypass all the hard things, God. Just take me to the test. I'll guarantee you I'm going to pass the test. You know why God's sending you through the things that are testing? Because He's going to give you the test. And He knows you're not ready yet. So He teaches you and He guides you and He equips you. But you're not looking at the point of the matter. You're looking at where you're at, not where He wants you to go. And if you can ever grasp the concept of going where He wants you to go and saying, Lord, I got here because of you, not because of me. I got here because I had a desire to learn and to grow and to be the person, God, that you wanted me to be. Too many people want to be the person they want to be. And they take God along for the ride. And it can't work like that. If God wanted you to make all the decisions, He would have equipped you with a brain that had everything already stored. 
You're not a computer that comes pre-equipped and pre-loaded. You have to learn as you go. In reality, your mind searches for the point in everything that you listen to. You determine what you do when the point is made. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Some of the things that we learn, we have to learn in a different way. Some people learn by hands-on. They may not understand instructions, but if somebody will just show them how to do it, they learn well that way. Some people learn by listening. Just tell me what to do. Some people learn by the instructions. So God gives us opportunities in many aspects of our life to learn and to learn how to learn. Are you that person that looks and says, I already got this, I know what to do. I don't need your opinion. I don't want your input. You might want to stop and consider that God put that person in your life with the information that they gave you and the church services that we sit in and the Word of God that you listen to. God didn't do that by accident. But so many people don't necessarily want to learn. They just want to listen. They want to walk out saying, I did my job, I came to church and I listened. If all you were supposed to do was listen, then why did God say, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only? Because there's a lot of people that want to listen and think they've learned. But the proof of learning is the application of what you've heard. You can sit and teach a class all day long. If you haven't given them the knowledge that's necessary and relevant to their future, what good is it going to do them? God's Word is relevant to every aspect of our life. Finally, brethren, in Philippians 4, 8, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. There's also the positive aspect of the matter. We live in a world filled with chaos and negativity. It doesn't take you long to find an argument. It doesn't long, find, take you long to find disapproval. It doesn't take you very long at all to find someone who can talk about someone else. And it doesn't take you long to find a situation where people are disappointed and disgruntled, discouraged and in despair. Because they haven't seen the positive aspects of the matter for which they are to learn from. What do all of these attributes have in common? Yeah, they're all in the same verse. But that's not the point, is it? The point is they're all positive. And in reality, because they are positive, they negate the opposite. They negate the negative. If you are thinking on what's positive, you should learn what's positive. If you want to concentrate on what's negative, guess what you're going to learn? The negative, the negative approach, the negative response, the negative outlook on life itself. Why? Because you're not thinking on these things. What does Scripture have to teach you? Think on these things. It didn't say consider these things. It said think. Think on these things. That's an ongoing process. Not two minutes a day, oh, I thought on those things for a minute. It's an ongoing. That's how you learn to deal with life. You think on the positive, not saying negative things aren't going to happen. But can anything really be negative if God put it in your life? If God has purpose, it has purpose. Therefore, it can't be negative. Well, pastor, everything can't be viewed positive. Says who? You just can't. You don't understand. How can death be viewed as positive? How can a car wreck? How can people who are going hungry? 
People who are sick, how can that be positive? Because it can produce a positive outcome. Because you either have to believe that it's part of God's plan or not. That doesn't mean that we're not tempted to view things from the negative aspect. But we can boil it back down to this one verse. What am I supposed to think about? Even if you view it to be negative, you take that and you look at it in the light of this verse and you say, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, there's got to be one of these that it fits. And I'm going to learn through this. And I'm going to grow through this. And I'm going to become the better person because of this. I'm going to become more Christ-like. When we compare ourselves to others, when we compare ourselves to their expectations versus God's expectations, when we compare what we like or dislike or think is fair or think is unfair, how does it relate to this verse? Because those are the points of the matter. But there are the positive points of the matter that we have to stop and consider. And our world does a very poor job of emphasizing the positive. Life can be as discouraging as you want to let it be. No, you've got that backwards. Life can just be discouraging. Life can be as discouraging as you want to let it be. Because if your eyes are focused on God, it doesn't have to be discouraging. It doesn't have to be difficult. Life can change in front of your very eyes. Not only is there the positive aspect of the matter, finally there's the purpose of the matter. Turn over here, if you will, to Jeremiah chapter 42. Jeremiah chapter 42. You see, the purpose is to look at why God placed the situation in your life. Stop and consider the individual love that God has shown you. You have your own personalized plan. Someone goes to a personal trainer. What do they want? They want to be personally trained. I don't want the same plan that's for everybody else. I want something that's going to work for me. God has that plan for you. There may be aspects that, that are good for everybody, but He has a personal plan for you. He proved His love by sending His Son to die on the cross. He proves His love every day by supplying our needs. But part of the need that we have is to learn and to grow, and instead we find our own options. That personal trainer, when you go and you say, thank you for your plan, I really don't like it, I'm going to change some things. Why did you go to the personal trainer if you knew so much? You wanted their expertise, their knowledge, their training, their experience with others. So you're just going to wad it up, throw it away, and say it doesn't work for me? You see, that's what people do with God's Word every day. They just, in essence, wad it up, throw it away, said, I don't want to live the way God wants me to live. I don't want to have the attitude that God wants me to have. I, I don't want to talk like God wants me to talk. I don't want to do the things that God wants me to do. I want to do it my way. So maybe we should learn more about ourselves, so that we can understand more about God. Jeremiah 42, 3, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. You see, you got to look for the purpose. You may not always be able to figure out why or how or when. But that doesn't mean just decide you can't do it and that you're going to go on alone. Are you looking to learn? Are you looking to understand more about God and the change that He can make in your life? Psalm 119 verse 72 says, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Literally, that I might learn the instructions of God. There's a thirst here, a desire. Give me, teach me, help me to understand. 
When was the last time that you prayed, Lord, I can't handle this, I can't deal with this, it's too much, it's overwhelming me, the water's too deep, Lord, I'm drowning. Instead of saying, Lord, teach me. Help me to understand. You see, it's a diametrically opposed point of perspective. It's easier to complain and gripe about what we don't have than to say, Lord, teach me to get through what you've given me. Because what you see is what you don't have is exactly what God put in front of you. And there are things that you create and you put on your own plate by your own bad choices. But God can still teach you through those choices if you're willing to learn. Assign importance to what God has for you to learn. And finally, practice the things that you've learned. That's the purpose of the matter. The purpose of learning is to apply, to put into practice. You want to go to a mechanic who's been to school and you say, I want a certified mechanic to work on my car. So they show you to this mechanic and he's got his certification taped above his toolbox. And you're quite satisfied because the man that's about to work on my car, he's certified. He knows what he's doing and my vehicle is in good hands but he just sits on his stool and looks at your car. Hey, I thought you were going to fix my car. No, you just said you wanted somebody that was certified. But I brought my car here to get it fixed, and I wanted it fixed by somebody who knew what he was doing. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Well, when is he going to work on my Oh, he doesn't apply his knowledge. He just shares it. This is what I think could be wrong with your car. You can pay at the front desk. Just sounds absurd, doesn't it? Unfortunately, we're kind of the opposite. God is more than qualified to fix whatever you need. You just don't need His help. That's what many people think. Or I'm going to pick and choose. Let's say the mechanic decided that he could fix it, but he only did half. Which half would you like fixed? Well, it doesn't work unless the whole thing's fixed. But there's a lot of people walking around picking and choosing in their life what they want God to fix and expecting it to work. I'm just going to put six new spark plugs in instead of eight, all right? Not going to work. But how many people are telling God, I only want six out of eight things done your way. The other two, they're mine. I'm doing it my way. Well, you're ready for a rough ride. You see, Philippians 4, 9 says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Do them. Learn from them. Grow. Grow. And the God of peace shall be with you. You see, the process is simple. Learn it, receive it. Don't just hear it. Don't just see it. Do it. Quit your griping. Quit your complaining. And look and say, God, teach me. Because you gave it to me. That means you have a purpose. I want to know what the point of the matter is, but help me look at the positive aspects of it so that I can truly accomplish the purpose. The result? Peace. Not too many people want to live life without peace. So they see all of these situations in life and they don't see how they can ever have peace. Look at the life that I live. How will peace ever exist? Start looking at the positive. Start looking to learn. Start looking to grow. And God's promise, and the God of peace shall be with you. 
It's not hard for many people to say, I can't do this alone. I, I can't make it. I can't do this. God can. And God will. If you're willing to learn. Are you focused on the point of the matter? Do you understand that the, the positive aspects of the matter will be what teaches you? And that God has a purpose for the matter that you face. What's your choice today? If you bow your heads, close your eyes. We have an opportunity each time that we hear God's Word. An opportunity to make a decision. To process that information that we spoke about earlier. How is this relevant to me? How does it change my life? How could it potentially change me and, and give me what I desire, that peace? Well, you've heard it this morning. Straight from God's Word. It is not irrelevant. It is with purpose. But are you willing to learn or are you simply going to say, I have this figured out? If you have it figured out, why are you miserable? If your way is so good and you've repeated it and tried it all of your ways and you still haven't found the answer, are you proving your intelligence? Or are you proving that you're willing to walk back through the same mud hole? Maybe you're here today and you say, I, I can't focus on the point of the matter because there's never been a day that I thought about God. I thought about His love for me. I just, I'd never heard. And there are people out there who still have not heard that Jesus died on the cross for them. Today can be the day that changes your life whether it's from the aspect of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, telling Him that you're a sinner and asking Him to forgive those sins, or whether as a Christian you say, I kind of have given up my desire to learn. One of the greatest joys you will ever see is a child learning to quote Scripture. Their love, their desire, their interest, their passion. Look at me. Look at what I can say. We've lost that in many cases. The desire and the joy to come share with a fellow believer. Look at what I learned today. Look at what God showed me. I'm, I'm learning, I'm growing, and I've got peace because I'm so excited. The altar's open for you today. Wherever you're at, you can bow your head in prayer and say, Lord, there's some decisions I need to make today. Be a doer, not a hearer only. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, the opportunity that you give us each time we look into your word to grow. That we can pray to you. And Lord, that we can look to your promises. And that you always come through in your promises. If any man lack wisdom, let him come. And Lord, we're asking... Lord, help us to see in each of our lives, to each one that's heard this message, that they would see how to grow. They would see how to learn, how to look to you. Just got to direct now and use your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Think if you were placed in a room and told you will never again learn a thing. Something physical has happened. There's a problem with your brain. You will no longer be able to process information. You will simply exist. Many people would cower at that thought. But how many people have chosen that state of life for themselves?